Imagine a substance so deadly that just a tiny amount can stop life in its tracks. A compound so feared that it has been linked to assassinations, spy stories, and some of history's most notorious crimes. This is cyanide, a name that immediately sparks intrigue, fear, and mystery. But what exactly is cyanide? How does it work, and where does it come from? You might be surprised to learn that it's more common than you think, and it's not always a villainous poison. Let's dive into the science, history, and reality behind this infamous chemical, right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, cyanide is a chemical compound that contains a carbon atom triple bonded to a nitrogen atom. This small but powerful structure is what makes it so reactive and in many cases, so dangerous. Cyanide exists in different forms, both natural and synthetic. It can be a gas, such as hydrogen cyanide, or a solid, like sodium cyanide and potassium cyanide. These compounds are highly toxic, but cyanide also occurs naturally in certain foods, plants, and even the human body in trace amounts. Surprisingly, cyanide isn't just a man-made poison used in crime novels. It's found in nature, often in places you wouldn't expect. Many plants produce cyanogenic compounds as a defense mechanism against herbivores. For example, almonds, cassava, and fruit pits from apples, cherries, and peaches contain cyanogenic glycosides, which can release cyanide when metabolized. Our bodies are usually capable of handling small amounts of cyanide, breaking it down into harmless substances, but consuming large quantities of these foods raw can be dangerous. Cyanide is deadly because of how it interferes with cellular respiration. Our cells need oxygen to produce energy, and cyanide effectively blocks that process. It binds to an enzyme called cytochrome C oxidase, which plays a critical role in the electron transport chain, the final stage of cellular energy production. By shutting down this system, cyanide prevents cells from using oxygen, effectively suffocating them at the molecular level. The result? Rapid organ failure, especially in high energy demand organs like the heart and brain. The effects of cyanide poisoning appear quickly, often within minutes. Symptoms include dizziness, confusion, headaches, shortness of breath, and nausea. If exposure is high enough, it can lead to seizures, loss of consciousness, and death. The speed at which cyanide works is what makes it so lethal. It can cause death within minutes if not treated immediately. Fortunately, there are antidotes but they must be administered quickly to be effective. Cyanide has played a dark role in history, from high-profile assassinations to warfare. During World War II, hydrogen cyanide was used in the gas chambers of Nazi concentration camps under the name Zyklon B. It has also been used in suicide pills by spies and military personnel to avoid capture. Perhaps one of the most famous uses was in the mass suicide at Jonestown in 1978, where over 900 people died after drinking cyanide-laced punch. These events have cemented cyanide's reputation as a deadly poison with a haunting legacy. Despite its toxicity, cyanide isn't just a substance of murder mysteries and espionage. It has many industrial applications. It's widely used in gold and silver mining, where it helps extract precious metals from ore. Cyanide is also used in the production of plastics, dyes, and pesticides. When handled correctly in controlled environments, it can be a valuable tool. However, accidents involving cyanide spills or exposure have raised concerns about its environmental impact and safety regulations. The body has a natural way of detoxifying small amounts of cyanide through an enzyme called rhodonese, which converts cyanide into thiocyanate, 
a much less toxic compound that is excreted in urine. In cases of poisoning, medical professionals use antidotes like hydroxocobalamin, a form of vitamin B12, which binds to cyanide and allows it to be safely removed from the body. Another method involves the use of sodium thiosulfate, which aids in cyanide detoxification. However, these treatments must be administered promptly to be effective. Because of its notorious reputation, cyanide has been surrounded by myths and exaggerations. One common belief is that merely holding cyanide in your mouth will kill you instantly. In reality, while cyanide is highly toxic, it requires ingestion, inhalation, or absorption into the bloodstream to take effect. Another misconception is that all cyanide-related deaths are the result of foul play. However, accidental cyanide poisoning can happen through industrial exposure, improper food preparation, or even house fires, where burning plastics release hydrogen cyanide gas. Large-scale use of cyanide in industries like mining has raised environmental concerns. Cyanide spills in rivers and ecosystems have caused significant damage to wildlife contaminating water sources and leading to fish kills. While modern mining techniques implement safety measures to neutralize cyanide waste, the risks remain. This has led to calls for stricter regulations and safer alternatives to cyanide-based mining processes. Cyanide is a substance that straddles the line between danger and utility. It has a chilling history yet it also plays a vital role in industries and even occurs naturally in foods we eat. Understanding cyanide goes beyond its reputation as a poison. It's a fascinating chemical with a complex story. Whether in nature, industry, or history, cyanide is a powerful reminder that even the deadliest substances can have both destructive and practical uses. It serves as an example of how science and technology can harness even the most feared elements for beneficial purposes, from mining and medicine to agriculture and research. As we continue to explore new applications and safety measures, the conversation around cyanide remains essential. Should industries keep using it with stricter regulations, or should we push for alternatives that pose fewer risks? Science may yet uncover safer methods, but until then, the balance between utility and danger remains a challenge. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.